Well, this week we're exploring the strange home of Dr. George Allen. <laughs> we've been, uh, with COVID and everything, we've been sort of, uh, well, stuck home and, and just stuck in the neighborhood. So we thought we'd go explore something that's right here in our neighborhood. Especially since we learned it was open to the public. Yes, it's it's been closed for, frankly, decades. And we've driven by it because it's right in the middle of town. It is. And um, it's kind of an unusual thing to find right in the middle of town. But as you can see, the home hasn't been occupied for, well, for decades. No kidding. I think the last people who lived here lived here in the 1970s. And the place has just been, just been kind of in limbo. It's a general fixer-upper at this point. <laughs> it's a general fixer-upper. But it's been open to the public so people can come in and okay. see what's going on here. This because it's just been purchased by the city and they're trying to figure out just what in the world they're going to do with this place. It has a, a rather rich history. Well, I imagine it does. <laughs> and, and, uh, but it's also just such a very interesting place to explore. It's, uh, it's not your typical home, that's for sure. And uh, apparently, it's now going to be Salt Lake City's newest park. Well, that would be nice. It's pretty in there. It's pretty in there, but the question then is, what do they do? How are they going to interpret this place? Is it just going to be a park, or is it going to be left something uh, the way it is? Uh, in what way do they pay homage to the history and, frankly, to the rather eclectic nature of the place because it really does have a unique history. It reminds me of Chief Rolling Thunder's residence. Yes, out in Nevada. Yes, <laughs> we, a little bit. We had a lot of fun exploring that place and that too is a historic site. Um, this place has been known locally by uh, the residents as Hobbitville. Oh, right. And uh, why Hobbitville? Well, there were a lot of students from the college across the street living here in the 1970s when Lord of the Rings was so popular. And although it really doesn't bear that much resemblance to Hobbiton from the novels, um, Somehow Hobbitville does seem to fit the place. Well, the houses are really small. Little duplexes, like two rooms apiece. Yes. Now, Dr. George Allen, uh, I think he was kind of an unusual character. He might have been. <laughs> it's interesting to ponder. <laughs> well, he got the job in 1931 as the penitentiary physician because back then the state penitentiary was just down the road here in Sugar House Park. Oh, really? Well, well what is now Sugar House Park? And uh, he bought this rather large chunk of land uh, here along Immigration Creek and decided to develop something of his own private zoo. Oh my. And because he was very much into that. Now, uh, mostly what he kept in here were birds. And I remember back in the 60s when uh, there were a lot of birds and bird cages here, but most of that has been removed and what is still here as you can see is just ramshackle and falling down but as you walk around you do get a sense that this was once a private uh, zoo a menagerie wow and uh, more than a zoo really an aviary yes a private bird zoo if you will now, because of his interest in these things, Dr. Allen also sat on the board of directors for the Salt Lake City Zoo. Oh, really? Back then, that was lo uh, located in Liberty Park. Ah. Liberty Park had been designed by one of Brigham Young's sons, Don Carlos Young. And uh, it was Salt Lake's uh, favorite place to go recreate back in the early days. <laughs> a beautiful, course. beautiful place. And it had its own zoo. And uh, in later years, the pride and joy, uh, the pride of the zoo was Princess Alice and Baby Prince, these two beautiful elephants. But uh, there was more to the zoo than just the elephants. It was actually a fairly substantial chunk of land, but uh, there was really uh, no place to expand and they wanted to move and later on they did. They moved to the mouth of Immigration Canyon. Oh. The Hogel family, big real estate developers, donated this really huge uh, chunk of land on the same creek as Allen Park, Immigration Creek, 
and uh, bit by bit they moved the zoo up here to the mouth of Immigration Canyon where it still is, Hogle right. Zoo. Hogle Zoo. And uh, the very first structure built in here was the elephant enclosure uh, to uh, house uh, Princess Alice and Prince. <laughs> Somewhere along here, I entered the equation. Oh, dear. <laughs> I, I remember the elephants, and uh, we would go up to the zoo and, uh, and get to meet the elephants. And the zoo expanded, expanded very rapidly, adding all kinds of very interesting animals and new enclosures. Um, but the elephants were always the pride and joy. That was, that was the big deal until this creature came along. Do you remember Shasta? Shasta was the neat one. I <laughs> love Shasta. All the kids loved half uh, half lion, half tiger, a liger. A liger, yes. And, and a soda company named after her too. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but they never closed the zoo in Liberty Park. They just continued operating it as a bird-only zoo. And uh, the Tracy family, who owned Tracy Collins Bank, had put up money to help develop uh, all of this and to help with the move. And so they named the zoo Tracy Aviary. Oh, that's neat. And it continued to operate as, as an aviary on the exact same piece of land using the same cages and everything. Now, for me, the neatest thing that they ever acquired was this. Oh, of course. <laughs> that's not a bird. Uh, but they acquired uh, Denver Rio Grande Western number 223, and they put that on display there at Tracy Aviary there in Liberty Park, just outside the gate of Tracy Aviary, which you can see in the background there behind the locomotive. The locomotive is no longer there. It's been moved to Ogden, but Tracy Aviary is still there. It sure is. And what a beautiful place it's become over the years. Still in operation and one of America's premier aviaries. So anyway, Dr. Allen uh, was quite a mover and shaker in making all of that happen, developing Tracy Aviary and moving the zoo to its current location and changing it into Hogel Zoo, while at the same time developing his own private zoo. Well, that's really cool. <laughs> it's really cool. So, uh, oddly enough, this place really reminds me of what Hogel Zoo was like in the early days. Right. Which, it's just up the creek from here, but um, you can really sense that this is uh, almost sort of an extension of the same place. It really feels like the early Hogel Zoo from the 1950s and 60s. And so the question remains, what does the city do with it now? That's a real good question. One of the interesting aspects is that uh, the descendants of the original birds are still living here. Yes, I can see that. <laughs> Some of them, at <laughs> he, least. He, he's rather charming. There's quite a bit of peafowl running around back here. <laughs> But it's still very much a, a bird haven back in here. And so as they develop this, they've got to take into account that this is the residence of a large number, number of uh, feral birds, I guess you would call them. Right. Wild birds that were brought here by Dr. Allen and are still residents on this property. So that's got to be taken into account, whatever they choose to do with the land. Right. Now, one of the other things they did is they moved a bunch of homes in here. They're the cutest little homes. I mean, at one time, they've been adorable. Well, and they, they bought them from one of the local mining companies. This is uh, originally company housing. Um, we're wondering if it was brought in from Lark. Could be, or uh, Bingham, something like Garfield. that. Garfield. Yeah. Somewhere here in the valley, this was company housing, probably for Kennecott and uh, the Allens bought these houses when they were no longer needed and moved them here onto their property and started renting those out, principally to the students uh, from the college, which is directly across the street, Westminster College. Right. And that's uh, when this place got dubbed uh, Hobbitville. <laughs> right, the little 
cute houses. The little cute houses with the students. Um, and back in that era, I did visit the place once or twice. I didn't know anybody back in here, but it was just sort of fun to drive in because it was a, a public street and people lived back in here. But in the 1970s, uh, the, the uh, surviving Allen, uh, Mrs. Allen, passed away and uh, I don't know exactly when they stopped renting these houses or what the you know family's involvement was but at some point in time in the 1970s they simply stopped renting the houses and stopped doing anything with the property. Wow. And it's been sitting abandoned ever since looking for some new future. What do you think? <laughs> I don't know. I'll tell you. Yeah. It's a mystery, isn't it? Well, there you have it, Allen Park. Or Very different. What will be a city park in the near future. In the meantime, the city has chosen to open it so that we can all come in and see it in its current state while they debate just exactly what should be done with this place. I could think of several things, but... Oh, man, the, the, my mind runs amok. Your mind, too. <laughs> Wait a minute, it always does. But um, I just, I really hope that they can come up with some way to uh, to keep it Hobbit Phil. Right. Keep it uh, as close to what it was as can be accomplished while still making it a city park. Well, if you haven't been over to the channel, please pop on over to the channel. And if you're not a subscriber, here comes the blue button. Are we ready for that? Uh, zoink. There it is. <laughs> there it is right there. <laughs> Well, we're not sure how you found this movie on the internet. We hope you didn't find it boring. And we will see you here on Tuesday. 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 Tuesday, because we're going to be messing around in the attic.